In Dead by Daylight, killers are expected to follow a standard code of conduct to avoid upsetting survivors, and part of that is to be fair and to make sure that you hook each survivor fairly equally. Well, this build is not going to do that. This build is all about ignoring the obsession, especially early on. And because we're already going to be pissing people off, we're going to play it with the Skull Merchant, a killer that survivors also throw temper tantrums about. Let's break it down. In Dead by Daylight, every match has one randomly selected survivor starts as the obsession, which is marked by the entity clause next to their name. This is meaningless unless players specifically bring in perks that interact with this mechanic. While the Skull Merchant herself doesn't directly interact with the mechanic, her power will help facilitate our build. The Skull Merchant can place down drones around the map, which scan survivors who walk nearby them. Three scans will damage a survivor and make them unable to heal for a short duration. In addition to that, placing a drone will hide our tear radius for a few seconds, giving us a way to sneak up on survivors. For our build, most of our perks do interact with the obsession. Save the best for last is a very strong chase perk. Hitting anyone who isn't the obsession with a basic attack gives us a stack, up to a maximum of 8, which decreases the cooldown between basic attacks. Shortening this cooldown also shortens the amount of time our character is slow after a hit, and can let us catch up very quickly. However, injuring the obsession by any means loses two stacks. Because of this, we need to focus on ignoring the obsession as much as possible. Good players who are the obsession will realize that you're using this perk, and do their best to bait you into attacking them, but try and resist the temptation. We're also bringing in Dying Light. Hooking anyone besides the obsession gives Dying Light a stack. Slowing generator repair and player healing speeds by 3% per stack for anyone who's not the obsession. Dying Light is generally considered a bad perk, because it actually strengthens the healing speeds of the obsession. But on the Skull Merchant, you'll often have survivors broken and unable to be healed, partially negating this downside. Also, because our build is focused on ignoring the obsession, every hook is going to strengthen the perk, so those stacks will add up a little bit faster than normal. However, we still need to keep the obsession occupied to prevent them from ignoring our perks and repairing generators. That's where Hex, Wretched Fate, comes in. This perk, which is actually from Dracula, <coughs> lights one of the five totems somewhere on the map, cursing the obsession once the first generator is completed. While that totem is lit, the obsession has a massive repair speed penalty, forcing them to spend valuable time running around the map looking for this totem if they don't want to repair that generator slowly. To help protect our wretched fate, our final perk is Hex Plaything. Hooking a survivor for the first time also lights one of those five totems cursing the recently hooked survivor with obliviousness until that totem is cleansed. Oblivious survivors cannot hear your tear radius, giving us an easy way to sneak up on them. This perk will absolutely flood the map with useless totems that take time to find and cleanse, giving our build even more passive slowdown. By the way, survivors can't tell which totems are which perks unless they actually cleanse them. In addition to that, because killers will often run plaything with Penimento, some survivors who haven't figured out all your perks may avoid cleansing those totems altogether, making our ambushes very effective. Be aware though, that when the next patch comes out, which might be around the time that you actually watch this video, the Skull Merchant is getting a pretty hefty nerf. Not because she's actually good, but because people simply hate her for a multitude of reasons, which is complicated enough that I'm not going to get into it in this video. So I figured right now was our last chance to try this particular build on her. Make sure you stay around after the video too, as I'll be discussing some alternative perks that you might want to try in this build. For the moment though, I think I've talked enough. Let's just get to the gameplay. Oh, Hawkins. One of my least favorite maps. So I'm glad everyone's going to be suffering this game. Okay, so let's uh, let's look around, see where we spawn. Um, I'm gonna just put down some a couple of drones, just in little safe areas here, just for some stealth. Ooh, and we found a survivor right away. Uh, oh, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna do my best not to tunnel with this build. Oh, he's he's got a scene partner over there, screaming just randomly. I'm gonna do my best not to tunnel with this build, but uh, 
All I really care about is not going for the obsession. So I might inadvertently tunnel someone while trying to avoid the obsession, depending on how the game goes. I'll try though. Uh, this Steve here, he is just running. He is like not paying attention to where he's going. He's just going in the straight lines from pallet to pallet. Uh, so I'm gonna guess he's probably not gonna play many actual loops. He gets a stun off, but there's nowhere he can go from here. So it should be a nice quick down. Oh no. The Wrath of Hawkins and it's six million pallets. Yeah, see so here's another pallet, which he's gonna ignore. He's gonna camp this one here, but he messes up. Yeah, I guess he should have just stuck to run up from pallet to pallet. Okay, we got our first down, our first hook. Two stacks, so let's save the best for last. And a stack of dying light. Okay, let's look around. He's also got a totem on him. And that first gen is done too, so uh, Wretched Fate is active as well. So we got all our perks starting to do something. Uh, let's see, I hear some progress. Yeah, nice hit. That's our obsession though, so we don't want to chase her. We'll let the Mig run off. This pallet's already gone, thankfully. We're gonna let her run off to keep going after the Sable. See, is she a Valder? She's a Valder. Uh, there's nowhere for her to go in this room. There's usually a hook that spawns by the stairwell. Uh, looks like the other side? Yeah, not this one. Should be able to get her on the hook still, though. Looks like the obsession got broken. She was already damaged, and we didn't lose stacks twice. So it's good to know that she actually has to lose a health state to clear, save the best for last stacks. Uh, instead of just, like, getting broken. Uh, let's look around. We got a couple of totems active. I don't see anybody working on them. Here's someone right up to my right. And it's our friend Steve. Yeah, this map, we're not going to be able to get a ton of value from our drones. Uh, I think he's got too much distance here, yeah. We do get a little bit of movement speed when he gets scanned. At least until our nerf. Uh, not enough to make a huge difference. Yeah, he can just go from pallet to pallet here. Uh, couldn't quite make that. Get this one out of the way. just run and there's the one pallet there to my right and this pallet's already gone let's see if we can cut him off oh he's got the stairwell here yeah, let's see Beat him to this pallet? Nope. Oh, I hate this map so much. Okay, let's try and cut him off, swing around the side. We do get him here. Oh no, there's all three people here. And that's the obsession trying to blind us, try to get our attention, but we're not going to chase her. She still has a totem to cleanse. Okay, we're going to fake the swing through. And we should be able to get him here now that this pallet's gone. Okay, nice. Uh, I don't think I can hook him up here. No, that's, that's around. Let's probably hook here. Okay, that's your second hook. Let's break this pallet. Okay, that's Wretched Fate gone. So, the obsession is no longer afflicted with that. So if we need the hooker, we can. Uh, I'm still going to focus on avoiding her when possible. Get a nice hit here. We're at uh, six stacks to save the best for last. You can already tell what a big difference that's making. Okay, I'm like the Steve. I see she just camps palace instead of running. Good to keep in mind. If anyone's on that gen up there, let's try to cut her off. Oh, hello. 
Hiding in the corner here, huh? Where'd he go? Okay, she ran in here too, so now, yeah, there's both of them. Let's see if we can get one or both to jump down the hole here. Okay, she goes for it. I'm gonna leave the other one up top there. I don't think she has much to work with back here. Just this one pallet. Fate going through. And get her. Eight stacks. Look at that speed. Yeah, let's hook her quickly, see if we can get back to that area, maybe. Mm, uh, she might be gone by now. Let's head this way instead. One advantage of this map is that totems are in such weird spots. So they're a little bit hidden. The auras are revealed to the afflicted survivors when they're nearby them, but they still need to be nearby them, and this is a big map. I'm not seeing anything. Let me get rid of some of these broken drones. Put down another one, try to get a little sneak up on that unhooking party. Okay, here's the obsession again. I'm gonna leave her. And she drops a pallet for us. How nice. Oh, she's just giving up. Fine by me. I'll give you a little love tap. Get out of here. Drops another pallet for us. I'm gonna let her go. I think this was your second look. Let's put her up. I'm uh not uh, against hooking the obsession at this point. Oh, that was your third hook. Oh, oops. Well, let's see if we can find that obsession. Yeah, there she is. She got a, a drone at scanned her three times, so she'll appear on my little mini radar here. Uh, let's see if we can get up to her quickly. She's already injured, so downing her will only take us down two stacks to four, which is still a good spot. Or we could chase her instead. Now, I don't know why she's specifically going for my attention here. She hasn't been hooked yet, so I think that's why she's... Uh, Okay to get my attention. And I think she just dead hearted there too. I'm trying to get a Wait, no, if I haven't hooked her yet, that couldn't have been dead hard. I'm not sure what that was. Let's just put her up. Yeah, that was her first hook. Uh, let's see, she got the drone off or whatever it's called. Let's see who this is over here. Okay, that's the obsession again. Like I said, we've got eight stacks. Yeah, no. We've got eight stacks, so I don't mind uh, hooking her. Give her a plaything totem, too, while we're at it. So they're in the rough state that survivors sometimes get in. I'll oh, hear that. Where, uh, Survivors just feel the need that they gotta heal, they gotta regroup, they can't work on gens. And this is the exact position you want to get those survivors in during a game. They're just too disorganized. Hold on. Yeah, we know that Steve doesn't look by him when he runs. Yeah, nice hook right here. Now this last survivor is probably not gonna go for the unhook. They're probably just gonna hide. I mean, they're gonna clearly go for the unhook right in front of me. So let's go and uh, get them. I think we're chasing both of them right now. Yeah, one split off to the right and one off to the left. Let's see if we can cut them off. Put a drone for a little bit of stealth. Okay, and it's her. Uh, where did she go? Locker? Hi. Depriving me of one of my save the best for last stacks. That just leaves our obsession, and because uh, she was just broken by one of the drones, we can track her with this little mini map. This is the part I always forget about Skull Merchant, but it's one of the most useful parts of her. Uh, also, you can kind of see like uh, why Dying Light isn't that great. 
I mean, at this point, we have eight stacks, so that's a pretty good slowdown, but the game's over, right? By the time the slowdown is actually, like, really strong, it's kind of late. But I do like it in this build. Oh, um, here's that one. Yeah, this is a really, a really fun build I like. Um, I'm sure to get some you know, salty messages after the game. And I'm sure I'm going to get some on my uh, video, too. But that's okay. I love everyone. I love all the survivors. Even if I have to kill them. It's kind of neat looking drone. And they brought some good stuff, some good toolboxes and brand new part. Playing matches where you specifically ignore a particular survivor isn't always efficient, but it certainly gives that match a unique feeling that you won't have in a regular game. Now, if you want to change up the build a bit, there's quite a few different options. Dying Light Slowdown is pretty weak, even if it does fit the style of the build, so you could easily swap it in for the aforementioned Pentimento, which lets you replace broken totems with Pentimento totems to slow the game down, but requires survivors to actually cleanse the regular totems so you're not guaranteed to get value from it. You could also replace Plaything with Undying, which will force survivors to cleanse two totems if they want to cleanse Wretched Fate, which is more slowdown for the obsession specifically, but probably less for the rest of the team. Now, if you want to double down on avoiding the obsession, you could also replace Plaything with Play With Your Food, which gives you stacks every time you drop Chase with the obsession, with each stack increasing your movement speed until you do any attack. I've always disliked this playstyle that requires you to utilize this perk, but it's certainly a valid option if you don't mind it. Whatever your preference though, let me know in the comments below, as I'm sure to revisit some version of this build in the future, although probably on a different killer. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, but even if you don't, thank you for watching.